I was working in Brazil since 1971, but it wasn't for another 16 years before I, I got involved in something related to this matter of internet. And in 1987, I managed to provoke uh, uh, an open national discussion about the need for something like the NSFnet, which had just started operating in the United States. And so that was where I started, I suppose. Um, the other things I think that uh, are worthy of contribution are uh, building the, the first state-wide network within the state I live in, Rio de Janeiro. Uh, that was in 1989, 91. Uh, and the f building the first, in 1990, building the first uh, long-distance TCP IP network, which uh, was uh, adopted, this technology was adopted for the National Network Project, which was underway by then, and implemented in 1992. Um, at RNP, which is the name of the organization which uh, it was the firstly the name of the project which built the, the first internet. It's now the name of the organization which uh, runs it today. And uh, since 2002, I've been working there. I was originally uh, seconded from my university. And I helped to extend the performance envelope of our networks during the, uh, the next few years. I was, I've been there for, what, 17 years now. And uh, this, this, the technology has changed and we've all been helping in our different ways to, to adopt the, the newer technologies to, to meet the needs of the, uh, the, the community we serve, which is the research and education community in Brazil. Um, I've also worked in, with collaborative projects with university research groups. Uh, since I'm from basically a university background, that's been very easy. I'm well accepted by my former peers within this region and we've been developing uh, for many years uh, advanced services for our users on this network. Um, I've also been involved in network development, particularly optical networks, uh, long distance optical networks, um, the participation in, in the Red Clara network. Red Clara was created to interconnect Latin American countries. There are, are targeted 16 countries and about 12 or 13 of these take, play, take part. Um, one of uh, these was, well, there's a, Jose Soriano from Peru uh, is from, uh, was involved in some of the first networks there. But so this, this phase came later. <laughs> he missed out on that. <laughs> um, and I think the international collaborations are, are worth mentioning because uh, for the last 15 years or so, I've been much involved in uh, collaboration with other networking organizations in other countries. There's, there's the Clara network, there's the US networks, and there's the European networks, and we have had a lot of interaction concerning how best to provide the connections we need in order to make a global internet. It took some time after I discovered about the existence of the NSFnet in 1985-86, uh, there was a time when suddenly things crystallized in my head. Uh, you could call it a, a eureka moment or a, an epiphany or something like that, uh, when I uh, decided that this is something that really I needed to be involved in. And from that time on, uh, the internet has been uh, a, an important part of my professional life and more recently, of course, of everything else which we do. Uh, since I'm from a university background, then, then it has been most important that uh, I have had the support and, and encouragement of, of colleagues in this community. And this has happened uh, both from the, the universities I've worked at, I've worked at three whilst I've been uh, in Brazil, and also the scientific societies which uh, uh, I've also had contact with. And these together have, uh, have been important in many ways for, for defining things to do and for being able to accomplish them. Uh, the people in, in the university 
uh, community work a lot in collaborations and uh, the internet is good because it not only allows you a space for for uh, collaborating in order to build it and extend it and and uh, make it more more functional but also it, it provides the services which are important for that so these two these are sort of they work together and that is that is great um, there are because of um, this uh, start off uh, some particular people that uh, have been important in this trajectory of mine um, I'm, there are several present members of the Internet Hall of Fame who had I've had contact with in, in view of or as a result of of this initial interest in the internet the, the first of those was um, Glenn Reichardt. Uh, Glenn has been, uh, he's one of the pioneers. He came to Brazil in actually 1985, the year of the NSFnet. And um, he came to try to uh, encourage people in the state of Rio to uh, perform a twinning operation with the state of Maryland. Apparently there is some kind of formal link between the two states. and. Uh, uh, he came to see me at the university where I was working, and uh, uh, it was news to me. Uh, so I, I didn't really react very well, but uh, he also talked to uh, the, our uh, scientific computing centre in Rio de Janeiro, LNCC. The technology which enables networks is advancing strongly at the moment. You, you see this mostly in the development of optical networks and also of radio networks, uh, this 5G um, uh, progress which is going on at the moment. And so the, these are going to make it possible to uh, make networking cheap, cheaper uh, by providing uh, more capacity or uh, for, for enabling the use by more people or doing more complex things. So these, these are good things. Um, the R&D networks, the research and education networks, have to accompany this. I mean, if, if the re research and education network is not capable of uh, offering services which are more advanced than the commercial networks, then the reason for having them tends to go away. And uh, this is something which uh, we believe has to be stressed, that uh, there are users which uh, cannot be served by the commercial networks to get at the moment at a, at a decent price. Everything eventually comes down to price, and the, the idea of being able to have aggregated networks which uh, can be uh, used by high-performance users as well as the, 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 uh, the, the less uh, aggressive people, if you like, uh, can, can be built econ and operated economically if you have the right conditions. Uh, one of the activities we are involved in at RMP is to try to encourage, or to encourage actually, the development of uh, new services and applications and we in fact finance projects with university groups to be able to do this and uh, this is now the, initially, this was to do to, to provide services for our own network to to offer to us our uh, users, but um, there are more general applications to, than just our networks. They they will serve for other people's networks, and so one of the big things is to to show that there are means of making money and a living out of uh, developing these services. When when the internet began you had to have a, a, a wired connection to some place which was on the, on the network. So everything had to have wires, copper wires, going to that, or a radio link, perhaps a fixed radio link, you know, something. Uh, these were the two alternatives. And uh, it was not imaginable at that time that it would be so easy to make, I don't know it's easy, but it's, it has been done. Uh, for a number of years now, uh, I've been using uh, uh, mobile telephone and uh, its internet access for several years now. I don't know whether it's pie in the sky, but uh, it would be nice
to have some kind of standards of truthfulness <laughs> and fairness in the use of the, the internet and to increase its coverage around the world.